Hi guys, this is Homer Johnston. Today I'm going to show you how to use my Road Painter tool. This is for version 0 0.3. First I'm going to go through the setup of the tool, how to install it, how to tailor it to your island, and how to run it. Then I'm going to show you how to use the tool, and then I'm going to show you how to move things over to Visitor. So first things first, installing it. Let's see, you've already downloaded it. Open up the zip file. And within it you're going to see a mission folder, an add-on folder, and a shortcut file to run the thing. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to install these, just show you where they go. The mission folder is going to go into your documents, other profiles, your name, missions. I've already got mine in here, Road Painter 2, and I've been using it on Zargabad. Next, the add-on folder simply goes in your Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead folder, and I've already got it in mine here. Likewise, the roadpainter.cmd file, if you wish to use it, also goes in your Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead folder, and there it is for me. I've made a shortcut to it, so that I can pin the shortcut to my start menu and that way it runs properly. If you pin just the CMD to your start menu then it won't work right. But you can put a shortcut to it wherever you want. Next, setting up the tool to work with your island. First, navigate to your missions folder. Look for the road painter, and by default, the suffix on the file na folder name will be island name. You want to change this to whatever your island is. In this case, I'm using Zargabad as a test. I'm going to change this to Afghan Valley in order to use Bush Lurkers maps as a test. After you change that, go into it. Once you're in there, look for and open up the settings.sqf file. Within this, the important options are right at the top. You'll see a terrain name, height map resolution, and cell size. Terrain name, I'm going to change that to match the island I'm working on, which is Afghan Valley. Height map resolution is 1024 for this one. Cell size is going to be 5 for this terrain that I'm working on. Save it and close it. Now I'm going to go and load up the tool. So I'm going to navigate to my Arma 2 folder and run the CMD file I've got. It pops up a little window which you can just close. Once you're in the game Go into single player, editor, look for your island, and go into it. Load up the road painter, and just hit preview. So this is the interface. First I'll explain the parts of it and then we'll go into how it works. Up in the top left you have road paths. And this list box will slowly become populated with roads as you draw them. One entry in this list box will represent one strand of road in the world. The export selected button will take the selected road path and turn it into a text file. Export all We'll do the same thing for every road path in existence. Delete selected will delete it. Copy it will make a copy of it. Uh, you probably won't get much use out of that, but it's there if you ever do want to make similar roads or maybe roads down a city block or something. The next three buttons are smooth paths. This one is to uh, smooth the terrain underneath the roads. Export XYZ file will create an XYZ file from your mesh that you've worked on in here. And import will look for an exported one 
and try to import it into your session. You probably will not use import very often. Save session will take everything that you've done so far and dump it into a file on your disk. Load session will look for that file and bring it into the session so you can keep working on it. View distance very self-explanatory, simply sets so far you look. There's a map down here which you can drag around just like a normal map. The small arrow in it represents the camera location and the cross in it represents where your mouse is looking at on the screen. To move around use the WSAD keys and Q and Z. You can hold down shift to move faster. To pan the view with the mouse in the main view just hold down the right mouse button. You can also use M to bring the map up into full view. And there appears to be a nice little bug there that I haven't noticed before. If you ever forget these, there's a little help dialog in the lower right. The first control in it mentioned is H to show hide that dialog. The next control it mentions, double click the left mouse button to place a starter piece or continue a path. So if I double click on the ground, a new dialog comes up. I can pick the type of road that I want to draw in here by double clicking on it. As a word of caution, some of these roads have some minor display glitches in this, but they should all work when they are exported into Visitor. So let's say I want to draw a Operation Arrowhead dirt road. Actually, that won't show up well. I'll draw the pavement one. Double click on it, and there's my piece, one of those conic pieces. You can drag it around with the left mouse button, or hold down shift and use the left mouse button to change its orientation. When you're happy with it, double click on it and it will start drawing. The road will follow the mouse cursor as best as it can. To place roads, you can either click and it will place all the roads currently displayed, click, click, or you can use the spacebar. By holding down the spacebar, it will place roads about one every second or something like that. When you're done, done drawing the road, press enter on the keyboard. It will place another terminator at the end of the road. If you want to keep drawing on that road, just double click on that end terminator. And you can keep going. As you can see, it added a new road entry in the paths list box. It tells you the name of the road, which is just simply road underscore and a number, which will increment over time and the type of road it is. I'm going to draw another one now. Double click. Pick the road I want to use. Double click on it to start. Draw away. Hit enter to stop. Now I have two roads in the list box. If I click on a road in the view, it will select the road up there. Click. Click click. Okay, I've got a clean slate again. This time I'm going to show you how the terrain smoother works. I'm going to use this nice ugly terrain here. First I'm going to draw a road over it and then I'm going to smooth the terrain under that road. Double click to draw, pick a road, draw it over this embankment here.
I'm going to draw a few roads. This is an Arma 1 road, so it won't have as many nice turns for me. It's a little more rigid. Now that I've got two roads, I can turn on the smoother. What you'll see first off is that it draws the height map with these blue dots. I can't edit the actual height map of the terrain in game, so I use the blue dots to help display it and see what's going on. On the left you'll see additional options. The first one, total width in meters, that's going to represent the total width of the altered area. The flat width in meters is going to, going to represent the uh, width that is made completely flat for the road. And the smooth strength represents how much to affect the profile of the road. A larger value will give a smoother flowing road. A smaller value will follow the original train more closely. Make sure that you have the road selected which you want to work on and I'm going to use the default settings and hit generate preview. I had this road selected. So what happens is generate preview calculates the result and shows it to you with a pink height map mesh. A pink mesh represents a modified mesh and it's not saved. So if I turn off the smoother tool right now I'll lose these changes. If I want to view what's going on underground I can make use of this preview height slider. Slide this up it will pull the height map off of the ground and I can see it much better. If I like what I see I can hit apply changes, if I don't like it I can hit reset. Let's say I do like this, I'm going to hit apply and now it turns blue. If I'm happy with that road I can click on this one now it's selected in the road paths box and I can perform work on it. Let's say I want to make it even smoother. I'll bring this up to a hundred and I'll make it a little wider. Generate preview. Okay, let's say maybe that's too much. Maybe I want to bring it back down to the default settings. I'll bring it back down to 20, 10, and say 60. Generate preview again. Yeah, I like that more changes. Once I'm happy with all the smoothing work, I can turn off the tool. Now I can export an XYZ file and load that into Visitor. While I'm here I'm going to show you the Save Session button as well. I'm going to draw some more roads. Really quick and ugly. I'll save my session. I'm just going to call it one. Save. Any time that you work on the height map of the terrain, the save process will take quite a while. What happens is if the terrain is modified, it will write out the terrain. If the terrain is not modified, it will only save the roads.
Okay, that's done. Probably took about 20, 30 seconds. Now if I draw more roads... and save again, same name, save, that one was instantaneous. So it can be beneficial to do lots of your uh, terrain smoothing together and then save it all at once so you save out on all that extra saving time. Now I'm going to exit this and reload it with a fresh slate. empty world again. If I go back to where I was before, nothing's there. I can hit load session, type in one to match the saved file, hit load, and now my roads are back. And if I select a road and turn on the smoother, my terrain smoothing is there too. So that lets you continue sessions uh, without needing to leave ARM open all the time. That's about it. Next I'm going to export stuff, and then I'm going to go back to Windows and show you how to get some stuff into Visitor. So first I'm going to export all roads. Then I'm going to export an XYZ file, and this is going to take probably several minutes so I'm going to cut out the video and come back. Done. Now I'm going to quit out of Arma. Now I'm out of Arma. Where do you find the data that's been saved by the uh, Road Painter? In your Arma 2 folder. In the Homer Johnston's add-on folder, I guess it is. You'll find a subfolder called Data Folder. In it there's Exports and Saved. In the Saved folder, we have the one file. Whoops, didn't mean to open it. One, that's the name that I used during Save and Load Session and Elevation Array is a file generated in internally. Uh, you can see it's pretty large and that's why it took so long to save. Going back one, in Exports I have each road path as well as the XYZ file I exported. Next I'm going to open up Visitor Go into my islands PEW file. Probably not set up quite nice, but that's okay. Uh, and here there's a few prerequisites. The first one is that we do not use roads. Nothing needs to be in here for this tool. We use artificial objects. And in here you have to add every single road that you're going to use. I'm going to cut out the video and add these roads. Okay, now I've added all the roads. Uh, I've got the Arma 1 roads here and the Arma 2 roads. It's worth noting that I only need to add the ones that I'm using. The Painter tool does not add the connection pieces, the uh, crossroads. So I haven't added any of these KRs. I've only added the actual path mud, grab, just the base prefix one, city, ASF 3, 2, 1, and cost, CES, etc. Just the base roads and their basic types. After I do that, I have to run the import object script. Now I just browse to my road paths. and open. Okay, 45 objects imported, zero rejected. And there it is. I will import the rest of them.
In the future, I might want to make a feature to combine all these. You could draw dozens of paths and import them in one operation. But there they are. Those are my roads. Um, I'm not sure if I'll have bulldozers set up, but I'll give it a shot. Okay, I don't have the textures set up, but I do have the roads. Next I'll see if I can get that XYZ in here so that uh, we can actually see it all. So let's try this out. Project Import Terrain from XYZ. Navigate to my game folder. HOMJ data folder. Exports. XYZ export. Open. It looks like it might have worked. I've got a little flat line there. Going to Bulldozer. Okay, I'm now in Bulldozer again. Uh, for some reason I had to close and reopen Bulldozer. I guess that the XYZ board doesn't get injected over to it. But as you can see, it seemed to work okay. Um, there's a few bumps on the edge of the road. There's one there. One there. So I guess I could have used a slightly wider flat zone for the road. But other than that, it seems like it worked pretty good. Same there. It could have benefited from a slightly wider flat zone on the road to make sure that it got all the way over. One thing that I will note is that the ends of the roads right now, they don't get conditioned very well. So you may have to tweak out the terrain a little bit manually there. Um, I'll see if I can improve that at some point. For now it just kind of makes it flat. That's about it. Get out of this and end the video. So if you have any suggestions, questions, or comments, visit the forum thread at the BIS, BIS forums and let me know. Thanks. Bye.